easy not to worry, but what I'm saying is we got to realize that worry is a sin. It's wrong. We can't just say, that's how God made, that's how God made me. I mean, that's how God made me to be worried. Sin. Because it's lacking trust in God. What do you do when the storms of life hit? You freak out. You walk back and forth, pace all night. Call your sister, call your mother, call your brother. Flip out. Or you someone who can trust in the Lord. That you can rest in the Lord. That you can stand up to pray. And you can concentrate in prayer because you know now it's time to pray. I put my life into God's hands. And I'm with this situation that I'm so worried about, I'm going to deal with it later. Now it's time for God. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Verse 11 says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. It's a very, very, very nice verse. But can you believe that verse about your life? Can you believe that about the delays in your life? About the things that God has not given you today? Can you believe that verse? Oh, that's just a nice verse that we look at and we claim, we say, Oh, what a beautiful verse. That's a very, very nice verse. But that has no bearing on our, our day to day life. Can you look at that verse and say, Truly, I'm in a delayed phase right now. God is not giving me what I want, but everything is beautiful in its own time. Don't fear. Don't fret. Third, don't faint. Don't faint. Our verse says they will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and will not faint. What does faint mean? Faint means... Basically, discouraged, frustrated, give up. That's what faith means. The biblical word for it is lose heart. You ever heard that expression? Do not lose heart. Let's look at these Israelites. Numbers 14, verse 2, verse 2 through 4. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in this wilderness. So they said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. It is incredible, these Israelites, what they did. Incredible, after all God did for them, and all God saved them, that they say, we wish we had just died in Egypt, or we wish we had just died in this wilderness, and they actually say, let us select a leader and go back to where we came from. Look, you know you're losing heart when you start to say things like, if only we had. See that? If only we had died in the wilderness. If only we had died in the land of Egypt. You start to faint when you start to say things like, if only. And then they talk about the let us return to the good old days when we were back in Egypt. It's funny how the good old days back in Egypt weren't so good when they were actually in Egypt, but now that they're out of it, you ever read the expression, the grass is greener on the other side? That's not true. You know where the grass is greener? Wherever you put more water, that's where the grass is greener. So maybe the reason the grass ain't so green on your side is you haven't watered it in a while. And I would encourage you, instead of looking back to Egypt and remembering how green it was back there, invest a little more in the area that you're in right now. I'll tell you where I see this all the time. Let's say a boy comes to me or a girl comes to me and says, you know, I want to change my life. I've been walking away from God. I want to change my life. I'm ready. I went to that retreat. I confessed, like, I'm ready. I'm ready to walk with God. I say, hey, that's great. Good for you, man. Make sure, most important thing, leave your idiot group of friends. They're losers. They're just dragging you down. Get rid of them. They stink. Say, yes, I'm going to do it. And, 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 and make sure you stop this and go in there. And, and yes, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And boy leaves my office, and he's excited. Then I'll see boy for a while. And I see boy in a couple weeks. Hey, man. Ah. Ah. What happened? They start to say some funny words. Oh, you know, you know, I thought about it, and you know, I I'm gonna just kind of do it slowly. You know what I mean? Like gradually, like if too much all at once. And what happened? What happened? You know what happened? Here's what happened. Those who are in Baltimore, okay? You know the tunnel on 95? 
Okay, when you go out to the bank, I hate that time. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. I get scared of it. Like, if you're with me in the car over there, it's dead silence. Okay? Each one is holding his breath, and I'm probably reciting several songs at the time. Because I've seen Jaws, and anyone who's seen Jaws, you've seen Jaws? Okay, you know what happens, the tunnel? Yeah, exactly. Jaws comes straight through there. So, I know what happens in those tunnels. So, I'm scared to death. Imagine you're driving through a tunnel. Okay, and imagine it's dark. And here I am on this side. I'm sorry, not dark, that it's light on the outside, dark on the inside. So here I am, I'm driving, and there's light here. And then I start to enter the tunnel. So what's in front of me is dark. Behind me is light. What happens is I drive further and further. What happens to the light behind me? It starts to get dimmer and dimmer and smaller. Now eventually I'll get to the point where there'll be light in front of me. But there comes a point where you have neither light in front of you nor behind you. And that's scary. What happens to a lot of us in life is we're like, yes, I'm going to go through the tunnel and I'm going to get to the other side. Yes. And we start to go through. That light behind us starts to dim. And it starts to get kind of scary. So we kind of slow down. We say like, we're really like hoping we can still hold on to this light and kind of see the other light. And if we saw the other light, we go. We grab the light. Point in time when you've got to leave that light, you don't have no assurance that there's light on the other side. And that's scary. And a lot of people, that's too scary for them. That's the Israelites. That was the person that told you my spiritual guidance. Leave your group of friends. Yes, God will provide for you a social life, God will provide for you what to do. But, like I said yesterday, you're making a point in time where you're kind of out there. You're kind of neither there nor here. Why would God do that? Why wouldn't God just give it to you right here? Why? Answer this question. Why? Why? I didn't answer. I'm not going to say it. Why? 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 <laughs> what does God care about? That? What does God care about? What's inside? Easy God give it to you right now. But the point is, God's goal in life is not to give you friends. God's goal in life is to give you faith that even if you have no friends, you trust Him. God's goal is not to give you a job. God's goal is that even if you have no job, you still trust in Him. You see how it works? God's goal with Abraham was not to give him kids, but that he would trust God and love God and worship God and serve God and be wholly committed to God even if he had no kids. Instead of fainting, we need to be persistent and pray. Be persistent and pray. The two need to work hand in hand. Be persistent and pray. Y'all remember the story of when the Israelites eventually did make it to, Jer to, to the promised land. And they had to conquer Jericho. How did they attack Jericho and defeat the city of Jericho. What great military strategy did they employ that they could defeat this mighty city with no weapons and no army? What, in what courageous and strategic and genius military strategy did they employ? What did they do? They walked around the city as many times as they could, and they played music. Think how funny this is. Here's this big, strong city, and God says, I got a plan for you. Ah, God, what's your plan? I see you come here. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to walk around the city. Walk around the city. Just walk around the city. March, there, march, there. Here we go, here we go. They finish. God says, okay, um, I got an idea. Why don't you do it again the next day? So next day, they do it again. Um, try it on Wednesday as well. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Get to the seven days to nothing. God says, okay, I got it for you today. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to walk around it seven times. Oh, there it is. That seventh time, that is going to be the doozy. What happened? You walked around seven times. What happened? Wall fell, bad guys died. Victory for the good guys. What's the lesson? What's the lesson? The lesson is, 
If it was me, by Thursday, I'd be like, okay, God, this is pretty dumb. <laughs> this is getting us nowhere. It's the exact same on Wednesday as it was on Thursday. And it ain't going to be any different on Friday. This plan stinks. Let's take matters into our own hands. Someone, go get some weapons. Someone get some machine guns. Uh, anything. Okay, like rocks will throw out of anything. Be persistent and pray. Do you think God couldn't knock down the walls on the first day? Do you think the funny walking around the walls had anything to do with the walls walking down? Like they walked down six times, then... The lesson isn't the walls. The lesson is the faith. The faith. To trust me, it wouldn't look like there's nothing. I said walk seven, you walk seven. Why? Because I'm trying to build faith inside you. Be persistent and pray. The biblical principle is that of sowing and reaping. Okay, and it's actually not, not, not even this uh, uh, principle of faith. This is a principle of life. In everything, there's sowing and there's reaping. Galatians 6, 9. Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Lose heart is, like I said, like faint. Here's the principle in life. What you reap is what you sow. So sowing means planting seeds. Reaping means taking up fruit. You will never reap different than you sow. If I sow tomato seeds, anyone in their right mind would expect a banana tree to pop up. No. You sow, you reap. So this is a life. If you sow love, you will reap love. If you sow criticism, you will reap criticism. Like I always say, watch, I can control it. I'm going to control this boy. Okay? I'm going to make this boy, watch, I'm going to make him do it. See? <laughs> How to get him to wave to me? I wave to him. I can make him smile. See? He's smile. He's smile to him. If I want to make you say good morning, what am I going to do? Say good morning. If I want to make him angry and knock him in the face, it's simple. What you sow, you will reap. The Bible promises, what you sow, you will reap. But you know what else it promises? Is that what you sow, you will reap, but not necessarily in the same day. Not necessarily in the same season. Think about it, like I said, if I sow tomato seeds, I'm expecting a tomato tree. Tomorrow? Next day? Let's say that's the way I am. I farm, here's the tomato seeds, and I water, and I fertilize, and I do a bunch of stuff. And I go home, and I sleep, and I come back the next day, and I'm like, what happened? And I come back the next day, and I'm shocked. What happened? What happened? There's nothing here. What kind of farmer would I be? A dumb farmer, okay? The principle is, you sow in one season, you reap in another. And it's the same thing in life. You pray. Prayer brings results, right? Yes. Prayer brings results, right? Yes. But no one says it's going to bring results tomorrow. No one said that. Do acts of service, kindness, be generous, be compassionate. God will take care of you. But no one said he's going to answer all your problems tomorrow. We want it to be, like for example, I tell someone, you got this problem? You can make sure you read your Bible every day. Read your Bible, read your Bible every day. God's going to, answer, God's going to give you all the answers to the Bible. I say, okay, great. They just open their Bible. Okay, I didn't get the answer. That's not how it works. You read, you read, you read, you read, and then six months later, God puts it all together and says, remember when you read that, and that meant that, and you added on that, and that command that you finally started obeying? Ah, uh, now it makes sense. It's the principle of sowing and reading. Jesus said, in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, He spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Here's what I discovered in life. Every single day of your life, you're either doing one of these two options. You're either praying or you're losing heart. And the more you pray, the less you lose heart. And the less you pray, the more you lose heart. The Israelites couldn't pray, so they lost heart. And the Israelites started...